Hey there, good people of YouTube. I'm Josh, this is my show. As you can see, fam, I'm back in the studio. Hit that like for me, check in in the comments. Of course, there are scammers impersonating me in the comments section. I'm never gonna ask you guys to DM me on WhatsApp, Telegram, or Instagram to send me your money because this page is about your financial journey and on that journey, you are the captain. <laughs> in the 1930s, there was an economist named John Maynard Keynes. He said, markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. To restate that in plain English, if you are betting the markets will go up, then the markets will go down until you run out of cash. Or if you are betting the markets will go down, then they will go up until you are forced to cover your position. This idea is still true in 2022. Market volatility makes us second guess what we're doing. Should I be buying or should I be selling? And that's true of everybody. I want you to check out this clip from Jim Cramer's show. Oh, now, gasoline was the linchpin in getting inflation under control. And now it's going the Fed's way. Yet the people who believe in peak inflation seem to catch the most criticism. Yeah, I mean, like me, even as the evidence is crystal clear. Why? Because there's a huge number of hedge funds who got caught short or underinvested. So they desperately needed to talk down the market in order to do some buying. A lot of the rallies you've seen in the companies that are less profitable are short squeezes. Now, it he says the rumor on Wall Street is that a huge number of hedge funds were caught short or underinvested. So they basically have been running around on popular financial news outlets and talking down the markets to make things seem worse than they really are in order for them to do some buying. To be clear, I don't trust Jim Cramer, but I do listen to what he says on occasion, and I consider doing the opposite. Where I did agree with him was the last statement that he made, that a lot of moves and pops that we've been seeing are the result of short squeezes. He is suggesting, ultimately, a conspiracy of market makers who know the markets will go higher. But I think it's super important that we look at the quality of this rally. Let's check out a chart of the S&P 500. Look at how beautifully we've come up and touched this line of resistance that has stopped out the last two large market moves. The first one being here in January and then the second one being here in March and now August. But we haven't had the strong sell off after hitting this area of resistance like we saw in the previous two moves. You see that we came up, we hit it and we came right down, we came up, we hit it, we had a strong sell-off in the next couple days. In this case, we've come up, we've hit it, and we're still above the five-day EMA, which means that we are still being controlled by the bulls. Defying gravity, this rally could go up a total of 27%. So, so there is no signal yet to short the markets, and everyone I know that's been attempting to guess the top and short it has gotten burned. These markets can still, believe it or not, go up another 10% from here. But I wanna look at both sides of a bull and a bear case for you. Larry and I met for lunch today and we both agree that this rally is starting to feel very frothy. We're up about 19% from June's lows. And as I've said in a previous video, if we do maintain our position above the 100 week moving average, then we can move up another 10% still. Kramer is saying bye, 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 but I want us to take time to listen to a commentary by a Mr. Dagus Wright. He has a master's in economics and makes a very important point. You know, Frank, I agree with you because ultimately what I'm seeing is that this looks to be a bear market rally. And the reason I say that is we may have hit peak inflation, but the Fed has not... Uh, signal that they're going to stop the rate hike cycle because they want to focus and get to a target of 2% inflation and we're not there yet. They also want to get a more balanced labor market and we're not there yet. So they're going to continue to raise interest rates and that could have a negative impact on stocks. So that's why I'm, I'm still seeing that we could pull back from these levels. I like Mr. Degas because he is easy to understand and he's to the point. So his breakdown is that this is still a bear market rally until proven otherwise, and we cannot lose sight of what the Fed is tasked to do, which is to lower inflation to 2%. Is everybody getting overly pumped on the idea of peak inflation? The Fed can absolutely crash these markets because if we take him at his word, 
then he wants to lower inflation from 9% to 2%. This rate hike cycle is far from over. So let me share another metric with you guys that I've been looking at over the last couple of days. This has proven a bull market 100% of the time. Our conversation is about the quality of this bull run. The standard was created by Bank of America's Savita Subramanian. She asserts that the historical bull markets have always begun when the market PE plus the CPI have a combined value of the number 20. Now we have a CPI at 8.5 and the S&P 500 PE is approximately 22, which brings us to 30.5 and we have to be below 20. This is proven to be a metrics of a quality bull run 100% of the time, and we are just way off from that metrics. So these are the types of things that I wanna bring to you guys so you have your own sense of what the technicals and the fundamentals are actually saying. So some of you may be asking, Josh, are you bullish or are you bearish right now? I told you the other day that I don't know yet. I have to take things one day at a time, one chart at a time, you know, the pops that we're going to be getting through the month of August are very likely micro short squeezes. The small caps that I've given you guys are not moving on positive news, but because they've been overshorted. They could peak and then fall hard. These markets are getting frothy and they could turn on us at any moment. So my advice is to tighten up your stop losses and be careful that you are not the last one left holding the bag. But technically today, things are still moving up as shorts are getting taken out left and right. That's why we saw the pop in AMC from $14 to $27. I called a pop from $14 to $20 technically in the comments section when I was asked about it recently a couple times and it went higher than I thought it would. On that note, I don't get back to all of you guys. Uh, only the bot scammers are capable of doing that, but I do run a handful of technicals when asked in the comments section. So if you guys have a stock that you think can pop, let me know, I'll check it out for you. I'll do my best to reply and give you target prices. You know, you pay for that in the likes and the subscribes, otherwise it's free. I'm gonna give you guys a potential meme stock that may follow suit with the short squeezes that we're beginning to see here. Before I do, let me briefly comment on a strategy to trade the three small caps that I've talked about on my page, which is Verb, SBET, and TCRT. We've already moved through the accumulation phase on these three stocks. What the accumulation phase is, is when stocks drop to all-time lows and then they move sideways for a month or so, and which we've seen. Now we are right in the middle of the markup phase and we're soon gonna be in the distribution phase. Markup is when they begin to rapidly rise in a matter of a few days. And then distribution is when they peak and they move sideways briefly before they go into a decline phase. You guys may be unlikely to be able to buy these on past support levels. I was asked about an ideal entry a lot in the comment section because very soon after I mentioned these stocks, they've already been on the move. Some of you guys bought the day I mentioned it and you're already up nicely, but others were waiting for a pullback. If my idea that we are going to still move up and sideways the rest of the month is true, then you guys may consider taking your total ideal investment if you're choosing to invest in these, breaking it up into four to six buys and then buy a market order midday every day for the next week. And then you would do two things. One, you'd keep a close eye on the target profits that I've given for those stocks because we're likely to hit them and then drop. So you wanna make sure you have a limit sell order in. And the second thing is if these stocks go up 10 or 20% from your buy, raise your stop loss so you don't risk any of your principal. I'm posting actively on Moomoo. If you guys wanna join me there and you don't have Moomoo, there is a link to Moomoo in the description of the video as well as the top pinned comment. And, I, and there's currently an exclusive limited time offer that me, Larry, and a couple other YouTubers have been given that we actually negotiated on your guys' behalf to receive up to 10 free stock valued at potentially $32,000 for depositing just $100. You only were able to get that in the past if you deposited it up to 2000 So this is a much better deal for a lot of you. 
click on the link, fund your account, follow me on Moomoo. I'm beginning to post there daily, and as well as I respond to you guys' texts. There is also a link for Weeble there, which if you have Moomoo and you don't have Weeble, then click on that link because they're offering fractional share investing. That's where I'm doing my value stock buys like Google, Apple, PayPal, and Microsoft. I'm doing those as part of my weekly long-term wealth building strategy. I don't ever swing trade those. I'm just investing in those. Uh, that's not speculation. That's actual investment. Okay, the next meme stock that I have actually bought into and I'm hoping for a short squeeze is Skills, S-K-I-L-Z. This company has cash problems and in my opinion is the opposite of a value investment. It is absolutely a meme stock short squeeze play and it's really just pure speculation. Do not put all your money into it. Do not do an investment Hail Mary pass. You might do better buying a lottery ticket, but I think technically it is on the tail end of an accumulation and beginning a markup and we may see a pop. I'm not greedy. My sell target is $3.61 and it could easily go as high as $4. That would be giving me again a 100% gain. My stop loss is $1.65. I have a stop loss because I don't win on every play. Sometimes I lose. But if you can win on 60% or more, you're doing pretty darn good. So that's the game plan. Leave me a comment, family, on what you guys are going to do with my small caps and what you think about the skills play, if you think you'll get in or if it's just too hot for you. As always, thank you for joining me. Check and make sure you are actually subscribed to this page so you don't miss out on my stock and crypto picks. Peace and blessing, my friends. I'll see you in the next video.